What's up everyone, Luke here from Sky Guy Customs, and today I'm going to show you guys how to paint your very own Wrecker helmet, just like this one, as seen in the Bad Batch TV series. Now, I'm going to walk you guys through everything that you need, everything that you don't, uh, and a whole bunch of different techniques that I use when painting up a helmet like this. So. Let's get into it and let's have some fun. Now, whether you are a experienced painter or this is your very first time getting into painting anything like a replica helmet, I believe that Wrecker is the perfect place to start. And that's because it requires very, very little detail work. What do I mean by that? We are not going to use any masking tape for this helmet. You heard me correctly there, not any masking tape. Um, because Wrecker and the whole Bad Batch, they have this sort of um, very weathered look, you know, lots of overlapping colors and, and patches and dents and scratches and the like. And Wrecker's helmet is meant to look hand painted. It's one of those designs that you're really supposed to see that he, he painted it himself. And so we're going to try to emulate that and we're going to do that by following the same procedure and painting it by hand ourselves. So. Let's get into what we need. All right, so what you're seeing here is the foundation of any proper record helmet. This is what it comes down to, four colors. Uh, you're gonna need a black, a white, some sort of dark gray, and then a red for just a couple of those details. They can be Kansas spray paint. Uh, you could use model paints. I'll be using some model paints for some of the white details. Now we're gonna use a couple other tools like some brushes or an airbrush, which is completely optional just for weathering. Uh, as a quick aside, if you're wondering how to go about smoothing your Wrecker helmet, if you're 3D printing your own, uh, go ahead and check out my Captain Rex build video. I detail exactly how I go about sanding all of my helmets in that one. I am also operating with my trusty palette, um, a couple model paints, this is a Vallejo Model Air White Gray. I've got some other airbrush colors over here that I might use and mix up. Uh, a couple of my brushes, which I might be using for some weathering. I might just use some standard washes. I'll show you both ways uh, and you can pick what works for you. And then just some assorted brushes. I mean, you can see the, like, we've got a sponge brush. Uh, we've got a couple old wiry, you know, small to medium sized brushes. What I'm trying to convey here is that you do not need very fancy equipment. Now, like I said, one of the hallmarks of Wrecker's design is this sort of weathered and scratched look. Uh, if you if you look at reference images for any of the Bad Batch, you'll see that none of their paint conforms to the lines of their helmets. There's scratches all over in different colors seeping through in different areas. Uh, and so to kind of convey that, I want to scratch this helmet up a bit. It's really smooth right now and that's great, but we actually want it kind of rough for this build. Um, so I'm going to be using just an old flathead screwdriver. Really anything semi-sharp would work. Pocket knife, box cutter, you know, anything with just a, a sturdy, sharp edge. Um, I'm just trying to give the overall impression that it's been uh, scratched and scored over time. Now, if you're the kind of person who tends to go a little overboard with weathering or you're new to designing like this and you don't know how much is enough, uh, again, this is a great helmet to start with because with the Bad Batch, more is kind of more when it comes to weathering. So the surface is still smooth, um, other than obviously where we scratched it. We are gonna go ahead and put on our black base coat. Okay, quick note before we start painting. Folks, please make sure you're using proper PPE whenever you're spraying something like this. Spray paint, it's nasty stuff. You don't want to get it in your lungs. A respirator, any sort of N95 mask, it's going to make your life easier and quite frankly longer. So please just wear this all the time. Keep yourself safe while you're painting. Now, I am operating with basically the lowest of the line spray booths. Uh, this thing was like, 20 bucks on Amazon, it folds up uh, and then expands. And this is what I do all my painting in, which if you're just spraying outside, that's gonna be fine. If you've got a spray booth or a more advanced setup, obviously use that. Um, whenever you have the opportunity, use a more advanced setup, but um, you know, just try to spray in a well-ventilated, ven open outdoor area where you're not gonna be inhaling a bunch of fumes or dirtying up some surface. 
Okay, so Wrecker is in the booth ready for paint. And like I said, we are gonna be starting with uh, a base coat and also our primary color in this helmet. And that is a nice black. Now I am using just a Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Black um, because another hallmark of these animated designs like Wrecker is that these designs are very, very matte. In the shows, they're not glossy at all. So we are going to be sticking with uh, our matte cans. And if you have to use a glossy paint and that's all you can find, that's okay. Uh, just make sure that the clear coat that you get that we put on at the end is matte because that will seal everything up. Okay, so our first coat is on Wrecker, and you'll notice, importantly, that you can still see the gray primer beneath this black coat. That is one of the number one biggest issues that I've had and I've seen plenty of other people have when painting helmets like this. You go too heavy with the first coat, and it causes problems. Uh, even if you don't notice it right away, it's either gonna make your paint tougher to bond with, or it's gonna cause runs, and runs suck because then you have to go back to sanding. So go light with this first coat, okay? Light pass over the entire helmet. You want coverage because you want something for future layers to bond to, but you don't want so much paint that you can't see beneath this coat that we just put on. All right, we've given it some time to dry, uh, and now we're gonna go back with the second coat of the same can, uh, and this time, this is where we're gonna start to, to fill in all of those little spots where we can see through, and we're gonna make it one uniform black layer. I actually ran out of my mat black. I had to switch to this Krylon uh, Glossy Fusion Black. Not ideal, but also not the end of the world at all. All that we're going to do now is come through with a matte clear coat before we paint anything else. That's going to seal the black up. It's actually great for painting to do a clear coat after your base like this, uh, and it's going to bring us back to that matte state. All right, now while we wait for that clear coat to dry and that matte to really set in, let's go grab the other paints and I'll show you what we're working with for the next steps. We've got the rest of our three colors, gray, red, and white, or gray or red and white in model paint form. Uh, and I'll show you both ways. You could either use the model paints and paint them on by hand, or you could literally take these spray paints, spray them into a little cup and use that uh, to, to paint it onto the helmet. And now earlier I said that you didn't need any painter's tape. That's true, but we do have the option to use a little bit of it, just not in the way that you would expect. Uh, and I will explain that later. Now the helmet's looking nice and matte. You can see some of the grooves and textures starting to form. This is exactly what we're looking for. The other great thing about this helmet is that the template for the paint is essentially laid out for you already. The gray in Wrecker's helmet is gonna follow along beneath this line that you see here. Um, so from where this flat part reaches the dome through there, that's all gonna be gray. And then the ear boxes are gonna be gray all the way around this back here until you get to the back vent. And that whole area is gonna be gray as well. Now starting with the gray, like I said, we've got a couple of options. You could take some model paints, if you've already got a gray, use that, or you can mix some black and white uh, and then paint that on by hand. I'm gonna be using a sponge brush to paint this on because that's gonna give us some of the texture that we're looking for in these colors. You also have the option of taking a gray spray paint, spraying out a little bit of it into a cup and then using that same way with the brush uh, to apply. So you can see what I'm doing here, just the repetitive marks with the sponge brush are giving it this really interesting texture. And notice like I'm following roughly these lines, but there is still bleed over because if you look at the reference images, there is on the real helmet too. Now, while the paint is still wet, 
if you want to add a little more depth and dimension, you can take a little bit of painter's tape, just rip off a piece and wad it up like this, okay? So some sticky side is out, some of the uh, like non-sticky side is out. It's just a wad of tape, but the gray is still wet. And you can see I've already done a little bit up here. What we're gonna do is just come in and tap the surface. And that is going to remove some bits of paint and give some texture in various areas. It's just a great way to add natural weathering to show those colors beneath and pull this gray out a little more, give it three dimensions, and really make it feel like it's been weathered. The really beautiful thing about a technique like this with a black base coat is that we already have that dark color in the recesses here, so it really makes these highlights pop. Uh, and the lighter that you go with the paint, meaning the less that you use on each uh, tap with the brush, the more texture you're gonna get because it's gonna be a little bit drier and it's only gonna be pulling bits off and leaving this really cool weathered and textured effect. So don't worry about getting any extra paint here because this back vent is gonna be red. As if this helmet needed another selling point. Another great thing about Wrecker is that it's conducive to those of us who are maybe a little bit more impatient when it comes to painting, uh, because so few of the colors actually overlap. By the time that you've painted on the gray, the black base coat is entirely dry. So now we can go ahead and get started on the white details pretty much immediately. You of course have the option of doing the same spray into a little cup here with um, you know just a classic white spray paint same exact procedure as before I'm gonna be using a model paint actually this is Vallejo model air it's a white gray so a little bit darker than white I'm gonna give it sort of that uh, pre weathered look Now, Wrecker's helmet has a lot of white details. They're gonna be lining this piece that moves up from the mouth. There's gonna be an arc over the top dome and then a line going back from it, as well as details that sort of follow the shape of all of the face plate. Um, so this is where you really wanna consult some reference images. Now I'm just going in and loosely sketching out where the teeth are gonna be. Same sort of thing for these uh, larger teeth that are gonna be coming in from the sides. Uh, just a very, very light dry brush. And you could even do this with a pencil if you wanted to, just to have a sort of rough idea of where they're going. The white details are also where you really see Wrecker's own hand in designing this helmet. So don't be afraid to leave brush strokes in these white areas. Now, after that white texture has dried, I like to go through and add a second coat of white. You can see this side has two coats. That side just has one because that's gonna leave the brush stroke um, sort of texture while keeping the, the coherent white because we've got multiple layers on there. When you're happy with the look of the white details on your Wrecker helmet, it's time to get your red out and paint on at 99. Again, red spray paint in a cup with a brush, it's gonna work just fine. Okay, so the red is on. Wrecker is looking awesome. I'm super happy with how this came out. You can see on the back, uh, I just went for like hand painted uh, on the red because I like the, the look of those streaks. But again, if you wanted to, you could totally tape that off and spray it if you want a cleaner look. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we can get on to a couple final weathering steps. We're gonna be doing a combination of airbrushing and washes to dirty up the helmet. You can use Whichever method works for you, I'm just going to demonstrate both. Washes, you might get, uh, you know, an overall dirtier, maybe rougher look. Um, 
but with airbrushing you can really hone in where you want that build up to, to concentrate. But before that, I want to scuff this helmet up a little bit because the texture is there, but it's still, it could use a little more work. You could use any sort of rough sandpaper, a sanding sponge. I'm going to be using some steel wool and just doing a pass over the whole helmet and that's just really going to scuff up the surface. Now what I'm trying to do here is really move the wool or the sandpaper, whatever you're using, with the grain of the detail that I've painted. Notice the difference here on this side that I've used the steel wool. Now in any areas where you've got too much buildup or you want to blend the colors a little bit more, make sure to move in the same direction as the detail. Again, folks, keep your PPE on. Here you can see the aftermath of using the steel wool, all those nasty bits of metal, you don't want that getting in your lungs. So wear your PPE, work in a well-ventilated area, just keep yourself safe. And in any areas where I wasn't following a detail line, so let's say on any of these upper black areas, for example, I just went through and scuffed randomly in all directions, and that just sort of wears it down so that it's not such a deep contrast between the black and white, and it feels more like they're sort of blended together and both collectively aged. Now we're going to move on to weathering. So I'm going to start with a wash. This is the most basic form of weathering, and it's a great one that works for a whole bunch of people. So all you're gonna need is a wiry old brush, you need some sort of paint, a little bit of water, and a paper towel. Okay, I am gonna be working with two speed paints. These are miniature paints um, by the Army Painter. They're gonna apply really easily. You don't even really need water. I still mix them with a little bit. Um, but you could even use acrylic paint, anything that you can get at the store, just like a classic acrylic, and you're just gonna dump a glob of that into your water, mix it just a little with the brush so that it's not fully dissolved, and then get a good chunk of paint and water on your brush and just absolutely coat the helmet in it. Now I'm using a dark brown and a black. If this was a realistic helmet, I would be using some lighter colors, some oranges and yellows, to sort of get that almost rusted, uh, sandy worn effect. But a lot of the animated helmets tend to stray further on the darker side. Your wash applied, your helmet is gonna look really, really dirty. Don't panic, this is coming right off. We're just letting it marinate for a minute or two so that it sort of soaks in but then we're going to take the bulk of it off so if it looks way more weathered than you want it to be right now don't worry about it just grab your paper towel and start dabbing off the wash now you could use a rag a paper towel anything like that for this practice don't wipe because that's going to leave a streak uh, you just you want to sort of repeatedly dab leave uh, some components dirty on the edges because that is obviously where uh, that sort of dirt and grime would naturally build up. So what I love about airbrush weathering compared to the wash is that you really get to hone in the details and really highlight some of the crevices of the helmet. So. Whereas the wash was used as a whole, uh, a pass over the whole helmet to create that weathered effect, I'm going to be taking the airbrush now with some Vallejo Model Air Black. Uh, and I'm going to take that and I'm just going to run it over all of the uh, seams and, and edges of the helmet because that is where some buildup would occur with the airbrush really gives it another layer of depth. So that's gonna be getting in these crevices here above the eyes, the line that runs around the dome, uh, the various lines of the back box and then some buildup, you know, under some of these overhangs. When you're thinking about this, think about where dirt and dust would build up on a piece over time if you were actually wearing it day to day.
I'm really happy with the way that this wash and airbrush combination played with one another. You can see we've got the texture that we built up from the sponge here, and then we've got the streaks from the steel wool. The white is sort of dampened down by the darkness of the wash, and then all of these edges now really pop because we went over them with the airbrush. All right, to finish up our paint applications, I'm gonna do one more pass of the matte clear coat to seal everything up, make sure that it's protected. And in addition to the clear coat, I like to paint the inside of my helmet. I just use a standard black. It seals everything up really nice, makes it look a little bit more professional, um, but that's t a totally optional step. Okay, and with that, our painting work for this helmet is done. We're gonna let it dry and then we can put the visors in. For the very final step of this process, we are gonna be using a welding visor, cut into small pieces to create the visor piece for the eyes of the helmet. Now I'm just securing this with hot glue myself, really any adhesive works. It's a good idea to put some sort of padding on the surface beneath your helmet so that when you have it inverted and you're working inside of it to secure the eyes, it's not scratching on a hard surface like a table. One thing that I'm really happy about with my own files is that the eye plates rest on this flat plane so that you can actually adhere them as one piece of visor material. Oftentimes if you have a piece as small as just one eye, it makes it really hard to get it to stick down at the curve of that shape, but when it's just one long piece, it makes that a lot easier. All right, and with that, Wrecker is done. I am stoked with how this helmet came out. I think that the weathering really looks awesome, and the visor, that shine in the eyes looks fantastic. The colors are playing well together, and I think that the scratching with the steel wool now, as a new effect that I want to use a lot more because it really gives you that sort of layered uh, and textured effect. Let me know if you follow along and make your own helmet like this, or if you use these techniques to make any other sort of helmet. If you want to make a helmet just like this one, these are my 3D files. They're available on Etsy. I think I have them listed for like seven or eight bucks. So you can get the files, print this thing yourself, and then follow this tutorial to finish it up and paint it. Also, be sure to check out Etsy in general for other cool 3D files, or if you want me to make you a helmet, if you don't want to make one yourself, be sure to check out the Etsy shop for all of that stuff and more. Follow me on Instagram and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.